Why can't I get my boat to surf the way I want it to surf? I can't get the wave set up. It's too steep, it's too short, it's too mellow. It's not loaded enough. I don't have enough ballast. I don't know how much of the tab thingy-majig to use. Does this sound like you? Well, rest assured, I'm here to make it happen and get your surf wave the best it can be. I'm Timmy McNamee, professional wake surfer and water sports coach for Lens Cove Marina and Lens Cove's Lessons in Boating. There are a ton of different manufacturers and models of wake boats and wake surf boats today. And I like to think that I have a pretty generic foundation on how to properly dial your surf wave, no matter what boat you have. Of course, a boat's gonna do a little bit better with a surf system, but there's also ways and devices that you can use without a surf system to get your boat to surf. In this video, I'm gonna cover and teach you about ballast systems, surf tabs and devices, and your speed, and what that has to do with affecting how your boat surfs. The first thing I wanna discuss, and something I like to refer to it as, is weight to boat ratio. Which means, if a boat is 20 feet long and has 3,000 pounds of ballast, it's probably gonna sink pretty deep into the water. But if a boat's 24 feet long and has the same amount of ballast, it's probably not going to sit as deep as the boat that's 20 feet long. Why? Because we've got less boat. So the more weight you add to your boat, it can affect your surf wave and make it a little higher and longer with more push. So what do these three boats have in common? Well, they're all water bottles. They're just a different shape. But let's look at what's inside them. If you have a boat and you fill it with water, that water generally, once you're on plane, starts to drift to the back side of the boat. This causes the boat's transom to sink deeper into the water. Now, as physics goes, to every action there's an equal opposite reaction, which means when this boat sinks down and the water propels down into the water, once you get up to speed, the water then shoots up higher out the back, causing your surf wave. So, that said, the deeper the transom of the boat is sitting, you're going to have a steeper, shorter surf wave. Let's pretend that we just filled the center tank of our boat. What would happen to the boat when we fill the center tank? Instead of the water being in the transom, we now have it kind of even into the center, which results in the boat starting to flatten back out again, which means we still have depth in the water, but it's not quite as deep as when our transom was just filled. That will result in the surf wave being longer out the back because we have less momentum down and upwards. Let's say, depending on the boat and surf system you have, if you fill the center tank fully and you fill the bow tank, if there is one, you've just weighted your whole boat. So the whole boat is going to sink into the water. What I find generally with each manufacturer that I have been in and driven is when you load the center tank and or the bow tank, you now put less angle into the water than just the transom and a bit of the center tank being full. This results now in the boat leveling out even more, which means your wave is probably going to be a little bit longer and mellower than it was with just a bit of that front tank ballast set and the transom fully loaded. So lesson number one, the more center weight you have in your boat and the more bow weight you have in the boat, generally the longer and more mellow your wave is going to be. With less bow weight and less center tank, and the more transom weight you have, the steeper and more push your wave is going to have. So this is where speed starts to become a factor. The average surf speed I've found is between 10.8 and 11.2 miles per hour, especially on the newer models. I say within the last eight years or so. A boat that is going a faster speed, so let's say upwards of 11, 11.2, is going to cause the boat to plane out more. So what does this mean for our wave? It's probably going to become longer and more mellow. If a boat is on the left side of a 10.8 to 10.6, what's that cause our boat to do? 
our boat is going to angle back again, which means we're going to have a steeper, more pushier wave because it's not as mellow. So now we run into a little bit of a fine line. If we go too slow with too much transom weight, we're gonna have a short and steep wave. And your surfer's probably gonna be a little bit too close to the boat or finding that they're speeding into the boat because there's so much push in their wave. But if we go too fast, we're not gonna have a steep wave with push at all. So there is a fine line in which you're responsible for to see how your boat responds in regards to the size of your wave to where you have the weight situated in your boat. I would say there's no such thing as a perfect one size fits all wave as everybody has their preference for what kind of wave that they like. I personally like a long steep wave. So how do I get that? I put my center tank or my bow tanks usually to about 50%, if not a little bit less, so that I have more transom in the water. And that causes a steeper wave. How I lengthen it out to be steep and pushy is that I up my speed to upwards of 11 or 11.2. Now I'm gonna throw in a plot twist. It's not just you and a couple best friends. You're having a group full of 10 people on your boat, packing it out and going surfing for the day. Rest assured that the wave that you just dialed with you and your two best friends isn't gonna be the same wave when you've got four people in the bow and six people in the back. So this is really when your personal intuition in a sense comes into play when you have the knowledge and understanding of the basis of the weight to boat ratio. So if I have four friends up in the bow, I'm probably gonna set my center tank to zero. And if I'm nice enough, I might ask one of them to come back to the back to help me sink that back transom a little bit. So if I have three or four of my girlfriends up in the bow of my boat and there's three or four in the back, I now intuitively have to take into consideration what the weight is in the boat before I start filling my tanks. So if there's people up in the bow, generally I put my bow weight and my center tank to almost zero. Sometimes it's around 10 to 20%. But I always know that I want to dip that transom back a little bit more than fully loading my boat to the front. For boats that have surf systems, so that's usually anything from 2013 onward. There is no need for people to sit off the back corner of your boat to get your wave. 90% of the time, it's how much weight you have in the front of your boat for how the wave is going to respond and react. So if you have people in your bow and it's still not as steep or as pushy as you would like, politely ask one or two to come on back to the cockpit and sit back there to help you surf. So the lesson to take away from that point is that your center and bow tanks and your bow and center weight are almost everything to shape your wave. And I've discovered this in Taiga, Centurion, Mastercraft, Malibu, Moomba, Supra, and the list goes on. Center weight equals everything. So if you can learn to ratio out your center weight, rest assured, I think you're gonna have a pretty good wave. Another trick I like to add, and this is especially important if it's just me and a couple other girlfriends or friends in the boat, is if I have a surf system, I like to list my boat, which means lean it to one side or the other. In this case, I'm a goofy rider, so I ride on the right side of the boat. I would take roughly 10 to 20% ballast out of my port side to get myself a little bit more angle on the side that I'm surfing on. Again, this goes for when you have smaller crews. If you have larger crews, you have the body weight and people that you can move over. Speaking of surf systems, now we're getting into surf devices, surf tabs, or surf gates. Essentially, those tabs are also used to list or roll the boat and are also used to mellow out or steepen your wave. So along with your weight ratio, you also have the tabs that you can use once your weight is evenly distributed throughout your boat where you want it. Generally speaking, the more tab you have deployed into the water behind the boat, the more mellower and longer your wave is going to be. The less tab you have deployed at the back of the boat, generally the steeper, shorter, and more pushier your wave is going to be. Now there's another fine line when using your surf tabs or surf devices. If you're under a certain percentage, your wave is still going to be washy. And if you're over a certain percentage, your wave might be way too mellow with no push. So there is some experimentation that has to happen on your part to see how your boat best responds with how much tab or how minimal of tab that you might need to surf. With surf gates and surf wedges, it's kind of a one size fits all. 
So you don't have a percentage you can generally play with to lengthen or steepen your wave. So that type of boat is more dependent on how much ballast that you have and where you disperse it for the wave that you want. When we get into crossover brands and older models of wake boats, additional ballast may be necessary and that's okay. You can go out and buy 200, 300, 500, up to 800 pounds of additional ballast bag or lead wake. So keep in mind, a lot of it is experimental. However, these foundations that I just taught you should provide you some knowledge and base understanding of how to weight your boat, how much tab and device to use, and how to get the best wave you can. As always, thanks for watching Lens Cove's Lessons in Boating. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button, like this video for more awesome tips and tricks in boating and water sports. Have fun and we'll see you on the water.